This is graphing equations in the form of f of x equals a times x squared. A quadratic function is a nonlinear function that can be written in the standard form of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, this coefficient, cannot equal zero. A quadratic function, when graphed, is in the form of a parabola. It's a u-shaped graph. The point where the graph changes directions is called the vertex. So here my graph is decreasing. When it hits the vertex, it begins increasing. The axis of symmetry is a vertical line that divides the parabola into two symmetrical parts. When we're looking at quadratic functions, we'll notice that each quadratic has some identifiable characteristics. So we can find the vertex of our quadratic function. Here, our vertex, the direction changing point is at negative one comma negative two. The axis of symmetry, the vertical line that I could draw that would split this into two symmetrical sides, would be at x equals negative one. The domain in this case is all real numbers because the U shape is gonna to continue to open, so it could be any X value. Whereas for the range, the Y values have to be greater than or equal to negative two. Negative two is our lowest point. When X is less than negative one, the Y value is increasing as the X value is decreasing. When x is greater than negative one, the y value increases as the x value increases. So let's graph some quadratic functions. So our parent function here is f of x equals x squared. So we're gonna graph this one first. So if I plug in zero for my x, zero squared, is going to give us zero. If I plug in one or negative one, I'm gonna get an output of one. If I plug in two or negative two, I'm gonna get an output of four. If I plug in three or negative three, I'll get an output of nine. And I can draw in here my parent function. Now I'm going to graph g of x, which equals 2x squared. So I'm going to find some inputs here to test. If I plug in 0, I get an output of 0. If I plug in one or negative one in this case, I'm getting an output of two. If I plug in two or negative two, I'm getting an output of eight. So I'm going to put this guy on my graph. And I'm being asked to compare these two graphs. So some things that I notice is they share the same vertex and the same axis of symmetry. In this case, the vertex is zero, zero. And the axis of symmetry is at x equals zero. I also notice that my parent function is a bit wider than my g of x function. So the graph of g is actually a vertical stretch by a factor of two. So compared this, comparing this to my f of x, it's a vertical stretch by a factor of two. 
Let's take a look at another example here. I've already graphed my parent function, f of x equals x squared, that's my light blue one, and now I'm being asked to graph h of x equals negative one-third x squared. So I'm going to give myself some input values to test. So if I plug in zero, I'm gonna get zero here. If I plug in one or negative one, I'm going to get negative one-third. If I plug in three or negative three, I'm going to get negative three. All right, so I'm gonna graph these. It got zero, zero, one, and negative one third, which I'm just estimating there, um, and three and negative. And once again, I see that they share the same vertex. Which is, again, in this case, 0, 0. And the same axis of symmetry, which is at x equals 0. I also notice that this one is a little bit wider here. So the graph of H is actually a vertical shrink by a factor of one third. It's also a reflection in the x-axis. The negative tells us that this is going to be a reflection, that negative right there. This diagram shows the cross-section of a satellite dish where x and y are measured in meters. Find the width and the depth of the dish. Well, when I'm looking at a satellite dish here, when I'm talking about the width, I'm talking about this length right here, and the depth would be how deep it is. So here is my depth. So when I'm looking at these points, it goes all the way from zero, zero at the low point up to two comma one here on the right, and negative two comma one on the left. So if I'm trying to measure the width, the distance between these two, negative two and two, is going to be four. And since they were measuring in meters, it's gonna be four meters. So the width of this satellite dish is four meters. Now the depth is basically how tall that is, how deep it goes. Well, zero, zero is my low point and it goes up to one. So the depth here is going to be one meter.